Hello everyone, it's the 22nd, meaning it's time for a new GitLab release. I'm Joop and behind the keyboard we have Camille and today we're going to show you some of the new powers GitLab has gotten with GitLab 8.15. You're now looking at a GitLab 8.15 instance deployed on an OpenShift Kubernetes cluster. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a project and in that project we're going to import a um, basic Ruby app. We're just taking a basic Ruby app from GitHub. And this is a simple Sinatra app that will show us hello world. Now that the project is imported, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the Kubernetes integration. And as said, this is a standard GitLab 8.15 release so you can do the exact same thing right now. We'll just get the URL and the API key from OpenShift where our Kubernetes cluster is running. We save the changes and we can quickly test them. If they work you don't get an error. And now let's try this new thing. This is what we call auto deploy. And all we have to do is click this button and what GitLab will do is it will give you a CI template that is all set up in this case for OpenShift for your specific type of application. So in this case for a Ruby application and what it will do is it will set up and prepare for you the production, staging, environments and even review apps. Now what all of that means and what it exactly does is what we're going to show you next. We'll start by committing straight to master so the build immediately starts for us. Here we can see in the pipelines that the build has already started running. So while the build is running, let's set up Mattermost, our chat client. The nice thing, if you set up Mattermost together with GitLab and it comes shipped along, integration is very, very simple. We're first just gonna create a team. And now we're going to set up the integration with the project where we are using Autodeploy. All we have to do is press the button and define the trigger word. In this case, we use the default one, which is the name of the project. All right, Metamost has been set up, but we still have to authenticate it from our user. So we're gonna connect our GitLab account. All right, with our GitLab account connected, now we can run any kind of command from Mattermost and it will sync together with GitLab. If we type help, we get an idea of the kind of commands that we run. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to make some changes. And how you typically begin with an idea is by making a proposal, making an issue. And what we can do right now is make an issue straight from Mattermost. So we use the command issue new, we give it a title, and we can even already set the description for this specific issue. And the issue is immediately created in our GitLab instance and immediately available. So let's get working on it. We can indicate that we're working on this issue by using issue boards. In this case, we just use the default one and we drag the issue to doing. Meanwhile, we can see that 
our deployment has been going well and that our staging environment is already deployed. So only by pressing auto deploy, we have an actually functioning staging environment running. And by clicking this button, we can actually see it running here. And all it does is show, show us hello world. But we know that this is an actually Ruby app that is powered by Kubernetes. Now the cool thing is you can go into the actual container straight from GitLab with the web terminal. Here you see, for instance, the actual contents of this specific container that we are just looking at. All right, let's make some changes and see how that is reflected inside of GitLab. So we're just going to replace this line with ID to production demo and give it a bit of styling. And rather than commit it to master, we're going to make a merge request, calling it one homepage, one indicating the issue. And GitLab automatically recognizes this and knows that you want to close issue number one because of the branch name that you gave it. So you see here our commit that we created. And of course, you immediately see that the pipeline start running for this specific merge request. And here you can see the changes that we've made. If we click on the pipeline, we see the actual pipeline itself and we see that the build for this specific merge request for this branch is running. The build succeeded. So what GitLab will do now is it will cre create a review app which is a full live environment of your application created specifically for this merge request. So you can check out exactly what the changes are that were made in a live environment. Meanwhile, if we have a look in OpenShift in our Kubernetes cluster, we see that there is a new environment, the review app, that is automatically created. So GitLab automatically communicated with Kubernetes and said, I want a new environment specific for, for this and deploy this thing into it. We see that it's deployed. And here you see the actual changes that we just made in a review environment. And this is of course linked straight from the merge request. You'll see it here above. So if we're pretty happy with our changes, we're going to just accept the merge request. And what GitLab will do is the review environment that was created for this will automatically be removed. But of course, because we merged these changes, GitLab is going to kick off the new pipeline for these new changes. So it's going to run again and build. And as we see, create this deploy to a staging area. And we were looking before at the staging area and all we saw was the simple Hello world. So what we expect now is that once this build is completed, we see the changes that we were merged appearing in the staging environment, ID to production.
And you can actually, in OpenShift, you can see whether the environment is still preparing or it is already deployed. In this case, it seems to be done. The build has passed, so we should, should see our changes now in the staging environment. We can just follow these links and open it, and there we go. Our new changes are live in the staging area that was prepared by AutoDeploy. Now, of course, what do we want to do next is we want to, do, if we're happy with these changes, we want to deploy them to the production environment. Now, the cool thing is, is that we can do this straight from chat. So all we have to do is say, deploy staging to production, and GitLab will kick off this process. And all of this was prepared by AutoDeploy. It's a template that you can edit, and you can add these commands to your own GitLab CI. But we've used some sensible defaults. For instance, that it needs a manual action in order to deploy from staging to production. If you'd want to, of course, you could also have an automatic deployment that would continuously deploy. And now we're just waiting for the build to finish, and there we go. If we look now in production, we see the same changes that we just now had in staging, and all that was required was a single command from the chat. All right, so we're happy with these changes. Now, how can we review what we've been doing and how does that look? We can look at cycle analytics where you can see how fast we move through this process. We can see the timing for each of the stages and we can see the actual events. So you see here that we just deployed to production and the entire flow that we just showed you only took about seven minutes. We hope you check it out in GitLab 8.15. It includes the auto deploy that we showed you today. It shows the terminal, the web terminal, and of course, all the features that GitLab already had, so, such as a fully built-in CI CD, powerful merge request, and much, much more.